What's going on guys, my name is Matt and today I'm going to be building and testing a $1000 gaming PC with one big problem. That problem is this PC is using the RTX 4060 Ti. Now Nvidia actually sent this card over for testing around launch, but because I was in the middle of a move I ended up pushing this build back further and further, but I finally said enough is enough and decided it was time to finally build a PC with and test out the RTX 4060 Ti to see if it's really as bad as everyone says it is. So in today's video I'm going to be talking about all the parts in the system and testing it out, but I'll also be talking about an alternative card that costs less and is a much better option that you could buy instead of the 4060 Ti and slot it into this PC to create a seriously powerful price to performance beast. The card in question is actually on a crazy sale right now thanks to the sponsor of today's video Newegg and their Fantastech event which is Newegg's biggest sale of the summer. The sale starts today and runs until the 14th where you're going to find savings on a ton of different hardware and systems. For example, you can get an Asus Tough gaming laptop with a Ryzen 9 CPU and 4070 for only $1400, you could get a 3 pack of Corsair RGB fans for $50, and an i7-13700K for only $360. The alternative card I was talking about is the AMD RX 6750 XT which you can currently get for only $330 which is an incredible deal and will only be on sale for this price today and tomorrow so if you need a graphic card around the $300 price point this is about as good as it's gonna get. There's deals on pretty much all components you need to build a PC along with deals on entire systems and laptops. Newegg also has a PC builder tool to plan out your build and a laptop finder to help you find the perfect laptop to fit your needs and budget. Finally these deals are for everyone, no membership required, so if you're in the market for a new PC or just want to upgrade your existing system, now is a great time and you can find more information in the description below. Thanks again to Newegg for sponsoring this video and now let's get back to your regularly scheduled content. So now let's go ahead and get into the parts that make up this $1000 gaming PC starting with the CPU. At this budget there's a ton of different options available, after some deliberation I ended up going for the Intel Core i5-12600K. The CPU is currently only selling for $180 on Newegg after a $60 promo and for that price the value is insane. You're getting 10 cores, 16 threads, and boost clocks of nearly 5GHz. This is on the Intel 7 lithography so IPC is great and for gaming the CPU is an absolute beast. With that being said the CPU is also great for stuff like content creation and streaming. The CPU doesn't come with a stock cooler but luckily decent coolers aren't that expensive and I was able to pick up this Thermalrite Assassin X120 which currently sells for under $20. It's got 4 copper heat pipes, a good size aluminum fin array, and a 120mm fan. It doesn't have any fancy RGB but it keeps the 12600K relatively cool and quiet so for under 20 bucks, I think it's a great inclusion in this build. For the motherboard I went with the Gigabyte B660M DS3H AX which is currently selling for only $99 on Newegg. This board is offering 4 DIMM slots, 2 M.2 slots, decent VRMs and a nice neutral color scheme. The back panel IO is also solid with built in Wi-Fi and 2.5 gigabit networking. This is kind of the minimum I would pair with the 12600K and while this isn't an overclocking board you're still going to get pretty much max performance out of this CPU because modern Intel chips really don't have much overclocking headroom in them. Overall this is probably my favorite budget Intel board right now and for $100 it's offering a lot of value. Moving on to the memory, RAM is super cheap right now meaning 32GB is easy to fit into a system like this one. What I went with is this 2x16GB kit of G-Skill Ripjaws 5 DDR4 running at 3200MHz CL16. This is good price to performance RAM at only $60 and 32GB is plenty of memory for modern gaming and is even enough for streaming and 1080p video editing. What's even better is this kit's only using 2 of the 4 RAM slots in our motherboard meaning upgrading in the future to 64GB will be as easy as popping in 2 more 16GB sticks into the unused slots. Next up is storage, SSDs are getting cheaper by the day so getting a good quality high capacity drive is pretty easy to do in this budget. What I ended up going for is this WD Black SN770 and while the drive here is the 500GB model this PC is priced out with the 1TB version that currently sells for under $50 on Newegg. 
The SN770 is a solid mid-range SSD perfect for a boot drive in a system like this one. One terabyte is enough for your OS, applications, and a decent sized games library. With that being said, if you do find you need more storage, you can easily pop in another NVMe drive into the other M.2 slot in the future for more fast storage. Moving on to the graphics card, this is the one low point of the build. What I went with, but don't recommend, is the NVIDIA RTX 4060 Ti. This is the Founders Edition that looks really cool and comes in at $400. The 4060 Ti wouldn't be that bad of a card if it wasn't for its memory capacity and interface. The 4060 Ti is using 8GB of video memory which is too low for a $400 card in my opinion, and that 8GB is running on a 128-bit bus, meaning the bandwidth hinders this card's performance in many titles. Interestingly, Hardware Unboxed recently even tested that it's beaten out by the 3060 Ti in a number of titles which is the card it's meant to replace. I'm going to be testing it for myself in this video to get first-hand experience, but I think we pretty much know how it's going to go. Sure, you get DLSS, frame generation, and good ray tracing performance, but those don't come anywhere near making up for the downsides in my opinion. As an alternative, I would recommend the AMD RX 6750 XT, which will perform better in a lot of titles and comes with 12GB of video memory. Beyond this, it's currently selling for only $330 on Newegg, which means using this card instead would bring the cost of the system to right around $900 and will actually perform better in a lot of games and be more future proof. I don't have one to test on hand, but I'll leave some benchmark information and links in the description below. To power this system, I went with the tried and trusted EBGA 600GD. This is a 600 watt 80 plus gold rated unit with plenty of power headroom for this system with a 4060 Ti or 6750 XT. It's not modular but has all black sleeve cables and is a decent value at $80. Power supplies are expensive right now but thankfully I was able to fit a high quality unit into this build. Finally let's talk about the case. What I went with is the Gamdeus Apollo E2, which was selling for only $60, but has jumped in price to $75 recently. This is an ATX case with a toolless tempered glass side panel, power supply basement, and two giant 200mm ARGB fans at the front, and a single 120mm black fan at the back. Building in this case was pretty easy, and there's adequate room for cable management. I really like the overall design of this case, and while this is my first time building in it, I don't think it'll be my last. All in all, for a little under $1,000 with the 4060 Ti, it has questionable value, but if you were to build this system and snag one of those $330 6750 XTs, then this would be an incredible value in my opinion, perfect for 1440p gaming, streaming, and even content creation. So now that you've seen all the parts and understand why I picked them, it's time to test the system out. I decided to test everything in 1440p because I think a $400 graphics card should be expected to perform well in 1440p, so without further ado, here are the gaming benchmarks. So as you can see, gaming performance on this machine isn't bad, it's just not really where it should be at this price, 
Again, with that cheap 6750XT, you're going to get better performance in a lot of games and bring the cost of the system down to around $900. So what are my thoughts on the 4060 Ti? Well, unlike the 4060, which I think there are people who could consider that card, the 4060 Ti just seems dead on arrival. The 8GB of video memory and 128-bit bus on a $400 card are just unacceptable in my opinion. At around $325, I think this card could start to offer a reasonable value, but Nvidia doesn't seem to want to drop the price at all on these cards. With that being said, I'm sure there will be tons of these sold in pre-builds and to uninformed consumers. My hope is that Nvidia will see all of this negative response to the 4060 Ti and make up for it in their next generation of cards, which won't be for another year or so. What's also disappointing is the 6000 series AMD cards that are great deals right now aren't going to last forever and we may be in for a weird GPU market over the course of the next 6 to 12 months. All in all, I knew going into this, this thousand dollar gaming PC wasn't going to be great, but I need to experience the 4060 Ti firsthand. but I'm also interested to hear what you guys think of this PC with the 4060 Ti and with the 6750 XT, along with your thoughts on the 4060 Ti in general, so make sure to leave all your feedback in the comments below. So yeah guys, I think it's time to wrap this video up. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And as always, this is Matt from Tech by Matt, signing out.